Hello again, clickers. My name is Maria Shandorova and I am very sorry I missed the last Tuesday, but in this video I have something very useful and interesting for you. I will show you how to load data back to a click data model from XML files. As you probably know, the default data storage when you edit your own data in your ClickSense app via Infinity Forms extension is XML file. You can find here information about uh, marketing campaigns. As you can see, uh, you can define the campaigns, dates, KPIs, goals, and also manage uh, the status of campaigns via this Infinity Forms right big extension. I can filter specific goals and edit only uh, related campaigns. However, in this video, we will go to the next sheet of this application. Here we have a marketing activity plan. As it is described here, the activity plan is generated automatically during the reload. You may notice that for each campaign, you can very simply define number of activities that should be pre-generated. So based on this number, the list of activities are automatically created. Thanks to this, for every single activity, you can define the category, topic, date, and also, for example, the very specific content. But as I promised in this video, I will show you how to load data from XML file back to a data model. We will do it with uh, this Infinity Forms object later, but now let's start with something more simple. I will choose activity ID as a dimension, add a new field, for example, description, And in Forms Admin App, I have already created the Forms Marketing Simple Form Instance ID. So let's use this one. What I'm trying to show you is that there is a different approach how to load data from XML file when it contains only one editable value and when it contains more editable values. I will now create some content for it and save it. All these descriptions are now stored into XML file that's called Forms Marketing Simple XML. Let's see how it looks in Data Load Editor. Let's create a new section. I have already created a connection to a folder where my XML files are stored. I can choose the specific XML file, click select and here it is. When you have only one editable field in your Infinity Forms object, the structure of XML file is this simple table. So once I click on the insert script, it will be loaded during the next reload. Let's check it in a data model. and the data TMP has been created. As you can see, it's not associated with other tables in data model already. The reason is that the key field, the one you define as a dimension, is stored into XML file with the name key. If I want to make it associated, I need to rename the key 
to a specific field name, so uh, in this case, this one. Try again. And here it is. That was very simple, yeah? Let's see how the XML file looks like for more sophisticated uh, table structures within ClickSense. It's for marketing activities, okay. I'm going to find it. And here it is. It may look confusing when you see it for the first time, but let's try load it how it is. As you can see, it was loaded as standalone but connected tables with uh, some kind of uh, key. What we did to make your job easier is that we have created a subroutine you can use for loading this data in one straight table, as you can see it in a front end. So in this structure. The subroutine I mentioned is uh, in forms documentation, the one you can open thanks to uh, this link. Uh, I have it here, OK, and in the section loading data, scroll down to you can download the subroutine here. It's a pure text, so feel free to copy and paste it into your ClickSense. I already did it. Technically, the subroutine should be defined within the load script before it is used. It's like defining a function with specific inputs, but without specific values. When you want to use it in the way how I defined it, you don't need to edit anything within this subroutine. When you want to use a subroutine, you need to copy it and use the function call. During the load script, uh, this row, this function call, will trigger reload of this script with specific parameters. As it is described here, the XML, the first input parameter, is a full path with libconnect and name of the XML file. I can copy it, replace this one. Uh, okay, we, we want it to <laughs> load this more complex XML file, so this one will be will be the right string. Second parameter. P key is a key string of XML file generated by Click. You can find more details information about it also within the documentation or in this video. The key string is this specific string that has been automatically generated by Click. Let's replace the second one. And uh, the third input parameter is the actual. And that means the check if a binary field actual should be generated. You can use zero if you don't want uh, it to be generated or one if you want. Okay, I have it also here, so let me comment it, so you will see <laughs> the result. And 
as the result of this subroutine, you have the table forms data. Every time the subroutine run, the result is called forms data. When you want to rename the table, you need to do it manually within the script. There is also a field key that's needed to be changed if you want to associate the loaded data with the rest of the data model. Because I set the third input parameter p actual as one, the new field actual has been generated. In the description, you can find the information that zero is a value for historical data and one is for the new WISP. So after the reload, you have here the full history of changes that stored in a XML file. For example, in this activity, the previous topic was no data in cloud, but the actual one you can see in the ClickSense app is offline. Thanks to this approach, you can decide if you want to load the full history back to ClickSense app to show the full change log, or if you want to use only the most actual data. And if this is what I want, you can do it very simply. create a new table within my data model and then I drop the table forms data. And here it is. The row with the actual zero is not here anymore. You may notice that there is also another binary field and that's deleted. Let's load it how it was designed. The deleted field is generated when you set in appearance section possibility to delete rows. Once I click on the delete button and save the button, it will generate value 1 for this specific key in the field deleted. I can reload the app now. And you can see that the row is still here. The reason is very simple and that's that deleted is only a field and it depends on a developer how it will be managed. If you don't want to load deleted data back to a data model, you can add this script to your where clause. Yeah, it's that simple. <laughs> and a small bonus for you in the end, <laughs> is that uh, you can see my improved script uh, for loading data and I highly recommend to use variables when you use uh, subroutines for loading data. Thanks to these variables, forms and key forms, I can set values here in the beginning and it will be used in the whole script whenever the subroutine will be used. I really hope you find it useful. If you are looking for more inspiration how to use forms and what use cases can be covered by it, you can find a new webinar on our webpage. Thank you for watching and enjoy forms!